Australia, a country I have been in for almost two years. Beaches stretched all the way along the coast. Conic monuments, unbelievable wildlife, the outback, everything you've ever dreamed of in a country. And it all comes at a pretty high price tag. Hey everybody, today we're gonna talk money. Exactly how expensive is Australia? Everyone knows it's pretty expensive here. It's one of those countries where the cost of living is outrageous. But I'm gonna run through the cost of living for you from accommodation to food to attractions to transportation so you can have an idea of how much to budget when you come out here. So for many of you backpackers, you'll probably wanna stay in hostels. Hostel dorm rooms from ranging from a four share up to an 18 share, yes. They're possible. 18 people in a room. We'll set you back between 15 and $30. On average, you're gonna be paying between 20 and 25. Excluding Perth and Darwin, when we talk about hotels, they come in around $100 a night for your standard hotel with an ensuite. Yes, pretty expensive. Darwin and Perth are even more expensive, coming in between $150 to $200 per night. And I ain't talking the Ritz, I'm talking standard hotel room. Camping is also a really big option because people like to get camper vans or drive around the coast or the east coast or into the outback and places like that with their tents and lots of national parks will allow you to pitch a tent and normally you just have to pay a little bit of money anywhere between five and twenty dollars per night or you can find some pretty good free camping spots. Now I'm not a camper myself, so if you've been camping around Australia, I know it's really popular to do, then drop some suggestions down below. Where are the campsites you found that are cheap or free? And have a discussion down there. If you're on a working holiday visa and you plan on staying for a little longer in a certain place, then getting a house share or a flat share is a great idea. I have gone onto Gumtree so many times and people will let out their rooms and generally you'll be sharing with a few other people and that can range anywhere between $100 and $250 per week, all bills included. My low rent price was $110 per week, all bills included, sharing with one other person in the room, which was really cool, but those kind of things, you just kind of have to stumble on them and just keep checking online constantly because you can get some really good deals. Next we'll talk about transportation. Flights along the East Coast can be pretty damn cheap. From Melbourne to Sydney, you can get flights for about $50, which isn't too bad, but that does not include any luggage. Budget flights in general across Australia range between $50 and $300. The $300 mark is when you're flying Melbourne to Perth or vice versa, the opposite sides of the country. Uh, Cairns to Darwin, for example, is around $200, $250. However, some prices for flights can be absolutely insane. For example, places like Alice Springs, which is near Uluru, you're looking at prices from Alice Springs to Melbourne at like $400 each way if it's not on special. So keep that in mind. The next most popular way to get around Australia is by bus. Greyhound services most of the East, well, all of the East Coast up until Cairns and they do a bit over the top as well and they also do South Australia. The only place that they don't really cover is WA, but Western Australia has their own bus transport things. Yeah. Now I use Greyhound to hop on and off all the way from Melbourne to Cairns over the space of about a year. I brought individual hop on hop off passes. But if you want to get one single pass Melbourne to Cairns, it will set you back $509. That price is as of now. So it probably is due to go up. And I know the price does fluctuate in high and low season. They also do smaller passes, for example, Melbourne to Brisbane, which is the first one I brought for a smaller price tag, but they are valid for three months. So you can hop on and hop off as many times as you want between these two places. The only thing is you're not allowed to backtrack. However, if you buy the kilometer pass, you can get from a thousand kilometers to 20,000 kilometers. And you can backtrack as much as you want and use those kilometers how you you want to use them you can go here and there and there yeah. the highest pass they do is 25,000 kilometers and that will set you back a very beautiful $2,675 but 25,000 kilometers is a lot so if you're coming over to do a huge trip it may just save you money and by far one of the most popular ways to go around Australia is by car and I completely agree there are so many places in Australia that you can't get to on a bus or a train or by flying, so getting yourself a camper van if you have the money up front is a great way. And be careful with camper vans, lots of backpackers will try and sell them to you, 
with problems because they're about to leave the country and they'll backstab other backpackers. So make sure you kind of know what you're looking for when you look over a car. Camper vans and station wagons can come in between $2,000 and $8,000 plus. Depends how much you want to spend and what kind of quality you want to get. If you plan on hiring a car, then there is a surcharge if you're under 25 of around $30 per day extra. On average, a car, oh blah, blah, blah. on average, a higher car will set you back $50 a day and if you're under 25, it will increase to around $75 per day. Not so cheap. Buy yourself a camper van which will come in around between $40 to $100 per day depending on what company you go for and what size camper van you are after. Trains also service around Australia but they're probably not one of the most popular. Sometimes trains can be slightly cheaper than buses, however, I have found trains in Australia very, very expensive. And I'll also talk quickly about getting around. In cities, you'll probably have a travel card because they don't accept paper anymore, except for Darwin. Darwin, they still have paper tickets, if you like it old school. However, in Melbourne, they have Mikey cards. In Brisbane, they have Go cards. And in Perth, they have Smart Rider? Smart Rider cards. And they're just like an Oyster card if you're from London and you just get, well, I'll show you my card, hold on. This is my Mikey card and you can top it up at the machines or in a shop and you just tap on and tap off when you get on buses and trains. Now we'll talk about glorious food. If you fancy going out to your local pub, then expect to pay around $20 for a meal, which is a pretty standard meal of lasagna, chicken parmigiana, something like that. Standard pub grub, about 20 bucks, but you do get pretty good sizes, especially if you go into country towns. If you're looking for cheap eats around the city, expect to pay around six to $15 for a good size meal. And if you plan on going to Coles or Woolworths or IGA and cooking in your hostel, or your apartment or your hotel room, then you'll be expected to pay between three and six dollars per meal, depending on what you cook. And we all know my favorite section, drinks. For a pint or a schooner, a schooner is what they call a size here in Australia, slightly smaller than a pint, it'll set you back around $10. So don't be surprised if you and your friend arrive in Australia, you ask for two pints of lager and they charge you 20 bucks for it pretty standard. A house wine will set you back between eight to twelve dollars per glass as is the same with a spirit and a mixer. Okay and finally I will talk about attractions. There are so many free attractions like national parks, museums, art galleries all over Australia but some of the bigger museums you'll be expecting to pay between ten and thirty dollars for entry. Some more of your bigger attractions for example Fraser Island if you want to do an excursion there for two nights and three days that'll cost you around three hundred and fifty to four hundred dollars per person however everything is normally included. You can go over I'll leave the link down below to the follow me around Fraser Island where my partner and I hired our own four-wheel drive and got to explore the world's largest sand island and had some near-death crashes and some crazy moments, but I'll link you to that down below. Another big attraction is obviously the Great Barrier Reef and a one-day snorkeling trip which will take you to Whitehaven Beach and also a couple of hours in the reef to snorkel about with the fishes will cost you about $100 per day. They can go up pretty steep when you go for yacht trips which last three days. I have friends who went on them, I couldn't afford it myself. They paid around $400, $500 for three days, but they said it was the most unbelievable time ever that they've had in Australia. The last thing I will add into this is if you are a smoker, be prepared to be shocked to your core. If you smoke your own roll-ups, then I will tell you this now, 50 grams of tobacco will set you back between $45 and $55 per pack. And if you smoke normal cigarettes, they will set you back anywhere between $16 and $25 per pack. So there you have it. I am sure I've missed pretty much everything from this video and it's already been a ridiculously long video. So if there's anything else you want to know or you want to follow on video, if I've missed something really stupidly big, just an FYI, I brought $5,500 out to Australia. I've said that in many of my videos and it's still my most asked question. $5,500. That is pretty much the government recommendation of what you should bring out here and it did last me quite a while. Like I said, if you're on a working holiday visa, as soon as you start earning the Australian dollar, it kind of balances out as the minimum wage is between $18 and $22 for what you'll be earning per hour, depending on the industry you're going into. 
Anyway, I'm gonna go because my memory card's almost full because I haven't emptied it in forever. If you like this video, then give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget, there is a button right there. Right there. If you like this stuff, you can subscribe. And it'll like pop up on your YouTube homepage, my face, twice a week, Monday and Fridays. You know you want that. Don't forget there is Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, all at Psycho Traveler, but the links are in the down bar below. And I will see you next week. Love you. This road, 115. Yeah. And how long will you be there for? Well, until you pick me up. You're coming home. Yes. <laughs> <laughs>